This is a 2011 SLS AMG, and you can probably tell by the title of the video, it is my belief that this is the last great AMG car. I'll talk a little bit why later in the video, but first of all, I'm gonna show you around the car. I say it's the last great AMG car. It's actually the first ever car fully built and developed by AMG. Every car before it was a modification of a standard Mercedes model. So the first ever, but it has its origins in the past because this is the 300 SL Gullwing Homage, a car from the 1950s, which of course had these Gullwing doors. So this car, the SLS, one of the things, one of the many things that makes it very, very special is these doors. There are not many cars in the world at all with doors like this, and it's just one of the things that make this car really, really cool. Anyone that looks at that, it doesn't matter if it's your mum and she knows nothing about cars, she can see that and know that this car is something else. So another thing that makes this car very special is what's under the, the bonnet. This is the AMG naturally aspirated 6.2 litre V8 engine. And this is one of the key points for me why I think this is one of the last great AMG cars. This is based on the legendary M156 V8 engine, which you'll find in the likes of the C63, the CLK Black Series like I've got, naturally aspirated, 6.2 litres, although you'll notice the car says 6.3 litres on the side. I'll talk about why that is later. Absolute brute of an engine, producing over 560 horsepower in this car. I say it's based on the M156. This has actually got a new name because they made so many modifications to the standard M156 for this car that they actually gave it a new name, the M159. For instance, this car has a dry oil sump instead of wet sump because of the excessive cornering forces that this car was able to produce. They had to redesign the oil sump, the lubrication system for the engine. Something else you'll notice if you come to the side, look at where the front wheels are here and look at where the engine is. This car, the entirety of the engine is behind the front axle. That means that this car is technically mid-engine. You might look at it, you might look at the enormous long bonnet and think that's definitely a front engine car. But once you open the bonnet and take a look, this is a front mid-engine supercar. So this amazing engine, which I mentioned is specifically reworked for the SLS, is coupled with a seven speed dual clutch transmission, which propels this car to 16, 3.8 seconds and a top speed of just shy of 200 miles an hour. This actually, at the time, Mercedes said, was the most powerful naturally aspirated series production engine in the world. So properly special car. And why is it so special in this car? Why do I think this is one of the last great AMGs? AMGs that came after this started to use the 5.5 litre and then the 4 litre twin turbo V8, which just did not have the character, did not have the brute force. They might have produced more power, but they did not have the charisma of the naturally aspirated 6.2 V8, which I think is what AMG should be about. AMGs evolved from the 80s and 90s. They were absolute sledgehammers. They had a huge engine, huge displacement, huge torque, huge power. They were never normally turbocharged. They made an amazing noise and they propelled you down the road like nothing else. So that's why I think that this is a true AMG. And unfortunately, newer AMGs, especially now they're starting to do the four cylinder hybrid in the C63, just are not the same. This car has character. I will show you the noise later on when we're on the road. The noise that this thing makes at all speeds is enough to make, put a smile on your face, no matter what mood you're in. So I mentioned these doors a moment ago. These are the famous gullwing doors. Something you might not appreciate about these doors, because of the design of them, if you were to have an accident and you rolled over, these bolts here are actually explosive and in milliseconds after the car rolls, will propel the doors off the car and allow you to be rescued or to get out, depending on what you need. So that's a cool feature. You might recognize these doors from the Pagani wire as well, but I believe now, on new models that are being homologated, these doors are actually banned, not considered safe enough, unfortunately. Another reason why this car is special and won't be repeated. Something bad about these doors, however, there's no pull string and there's no button to close them. So if you're shorter, it's quite an effort to reach up and close them. So at the time, back in 2010, I actually remember one of my first experiences with this car was it was the cover car, there was a red one cover car for Gran Turismo 5 when that came out on the PlayStation. So ever since then, I've been encapsulated by it. Actually, when this car was new, it cost, I think, around about £165,000. And this example here, 
is for sale with my friends at the Carco Chelsea. Very, very low mileage example, 5,000 miles, and it's going to be quite a bit over 165,000 pounds. So an AMG to hold its value so well is pretty rare. At the time when this car's competitors was the Ferrari 458, and a Ferrari 458 has not increased in price since it came out new. So that is another reason that tells you all you need to know about this car and how special it is. So I've talked and talked and talked about this amazing engine. I think it's time to let you hear it. I'm going to jump in now and fire it up. What a sound that is, absolutely incredible. That's the sort of thing you cannot get from a turbocharged engine. So I think it's time that we jump in and go for a drive. So we're in the car now, I've turned it off again just to talk you through the whole process, because I guess a lot of you will not have been fortunate enough to sit in an SLS AMG. So I'm gonna talk you through how to turn it on. This car is keyless go, which is always cool, a little bit like a race car. So foot on the brake, engine start, stop here fires into life. It's an amazing sound outside. It sounds great inside as well. When you're on the road, when you're blipping through the gears, it always makes you laugh. Inside, we've got a lot of carbon fiber, Alcantara steering wheel, of course, the flappy paddles here. Then up here, you'll notice there's actually cutouts in the gullwing doors to give you headroom, because if my head was here, I'd be hitting against the ceiling, but they've actually put cutouts in the doors, because obviously the mechanism for the, for the quite unique door design is up here, but then the actual doors themselves have space for, you know, I'm, I'm six foot and there's quite a lot of space in here for me, thankfully. So I mentioned it's keyless start, but if you happen to not be able to get the keyless to work, the battery's gone flat in the key or whatever, there's a secret compartment back here, again, made of carbon fiber, and you take the key and you put it in that there and you can actually start the car without needing to rely on the keyless. One problem this car does have is a bit of a lack of storage. There's no pockets in the doors at all. All you get is door handle, and controls for the windows and of course this big handle here to pull it down i guess with the angle that the doors go on if you had pockets things might fall out of them so this is the only storage you get this piece here and under here as well if we slide that backwards you get a cup holder this is the seven speed dual clutch as i mentioned and it's really responsive in this car it's not like older mercedes where you've got to wait for it to decide to change gear you blipped down the gears and straight away the engine responds. So this car has a few modes, comfort, sport, sport plus and manual for the gearbox. So obviously that determines how soon it changes up, how, how far through the revs before it decides it's time for the next gear. Of course, you can just put it completely into manual mode. So you decide when it's time for the next gear and it won't shift up for you as well. It'll hit, let you hit the red line, which is a nice touch seven speed dual clutch transmission really responsive and the noise is just something else Oof, when you downshift it really is like thunder this engine So we're back from quite a fun drive. Hopefully you enjoyed that experience on board with us and you were able to appreciate how visceral and amazing it is to drive this thing. Like on the face of it, it's a GT car, it's comfortable, it's a good cruiser, but it's actually, it's a supercar. With it being mid-engined, with that exhaust note, with the way it's set up, how poised it is in the corners, the fantastic brakes as well. This is a proper, proper supercar. Really don't think that this is just a car for cruising across Europe in. This thing, is proper. I mentioned earlier the 6.3 badge on the side. I keep calling this car a 6.2 and that's because it is a 6.2. However, Mercedes call it a 6.3. The same with the C63 and so on. And a lot of you will know this, but many of you won't know this. The reason they named it so was in homage to earlier Mercedes models, such as the 300 SEL 6.3 Red Pig. It's a little bit of a tribute to those, but in reality, the engine they made was a 6.2, but they called it a 6.3 to have it in keeping with older famous AMG models. So in summary, this is the first AMG 
built solely by AMG. This, in my opinion, is the last great AMG. This is in homage to a very old Mercedes and in conclusion is absolutely amazing. I adore this car. I wish I could own it myself. If you want to own it, it will be for sale with the Carco Chelsea. And this example is just stunning with such a low mileage, not a mark on it. It really is. The leather's inside. We'll show you close up in a moment. It really is like a brand new car. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed my explanation why I think that this car, one of the very last cars, because it was only I think the same year they started producing the 5.5 twin turbo V8 in the likes of the E63. This is one of the last AMGs to have the proper engine, to be the proper AMG experience, and really the car that always puts a smile on your face. It makes a noise and it has the performance to back it up.